Welcome back to Questing Beast. I'm Ben. Today we're taking a look at The Bone Marshes by David Sherduin, uh, which is a adventure setting uh, designed for old school D&D, and more specifically Nave, which is a rule set that I created uh, a little while ago. Here's the back of the book here. Though, as usual, this uh, video is brought to you by my awesome patrons over on Patreon, as well as by my newsletter. So I put out a roughly monthly newsletter called The Gladison that keeps you updated with all the cool things happening in the old school scene, whether that be from the blogosphere or from YouTube or podcasts and so on. So it's completely free service, and I'll put a link to it down in the description below if you'd like to sign up to get new issues of it. So let's look at what we get inside the Bone Marshes. So the general idea here is that you are exploring a swamp, the Bone Marshes. But there's very strange happenings there. There's light all the time. It never seems to go completely dark. There's fires spreading across the bone marshes. And part of the bone marshes is rotating. I'll show you what I mean here. Um, right off, one issue that I ran into is that the map of it is not really available at the front of the book. You have to kind of dig around to figure out the map of the region. But it's found over on page 27. And here's the basic layout of the environment. The twist here is that these seven hexes in the middle are rotating um, one hex at a time um, over the course of every day. So 4 p.m., 8 p.m., noon, 4 p.m., 8 p.m., etc. It's going to be rotating around. So navigating is going to be very weird. Apparently, if you stand on the edge of this rotating section, it's, it'll just spin past you at about a fast walking pace. Um, but this means that you're not going to know what hex you're going to run into as you cross over this border until you start figuring out the, um, the gimmick here. We have some touchstones that this is um, based on, including games, uh, Nave, uh, Hot Springs Island, Tower of the Stargazer, and some music and movies as well. We have a rundown of my system Nave. So um, the system that I created Nave is not very long. It's like seven pages long. And most of the rules here are just recapped. So you don't actually have to buy my system. It's all recapped right here, along with some extra rules that he's added on, in particular rules for mud. Uh, the system Nave relies a lot on item slots in terms of uh, you, you have a number of slots that, that you put in your uh, equipment and that determines a lot about your character. Um, what this uh, rule set does is it adds mud as a mechanic. So as you're traveling through these swamps, there's a lot of times where you'll get the consequence of mud being added to your slots. They just get filled up with mud, therefore ruining items or just taking up space so that you can't um, put in the things that you want to. I think that's a clever little idea. We have lots of good tables for rolling up your gear, appearance. Um, we have 50 spells. Uh, my original uh, rule set has 100 spells. So if you want to get those extra 50 spells, you can check out mine. But there's a lot of really good ones here. And it's the sort of stuff that you would tend to uh, find and work well in this swamp-like region, I think. That's the way it came across to me. We have a general um, idea of how the marshes work, what things look like, and the timeline of what's going on here. There's definitely some sci-fi-ish aspects where the weirdness in the swamp is going to, could uh, possibly be due to extraterrestrial interference. We have a section on charting the marshes. So the main uh, adventure hook here is that, well, there are several adventure hooks, but there is a merchant or an explorer who's like camped out over here, and she's trying to find a route through the marshes, and you're being hired to do that. Once you do that, she has another mission to give you and then another mission, but that's the basic layout of this. We have a great um, explanation of who this person is. I think she, the character has a lot of um, personality to her. She's very easy to run. A lot of things that she's doing, it makes things very concrete. So you're not just given a brief description of her. You're given the things that she does, the things that she says. I really like that about it. This is a flyer that can get handed out to you. Um, you can actually print this out and give it to the players as something that they find in a town or tacked to a tree so that they have the uh, flyer that Azimek is giving to new adventurers. Another handout that can be given out here for a separate mission, the Volt Cell Notes. Uh, some of the organization is a little confusing, to be perfectly honest. For example, this handout goes to this section over here 
whereas this handout kind of goes to this section over here. And it's not totally clear when you're reading that that's what's going on. Um, I forget exactly where, but there's a part where it says that the handout is found on page 13. But if you go to page 13, it's not actually there. In fact, it's on page 16. So there's a little bit of editing, I think, that would have helped out here. We have a second mission here, retrieve the volt cell, which are these batteries that can be found around the setting, uh, hidden in the muck or underneath objects. And you can affect the setting pretty dramatically by removing them or maybe using them to your own advantage. We have this section, the heart of the marshes, where a new goal is to bring at least two more volt cells, three in total, back to Azimek, record discovered threats and valuable resources, and you get rewards for uh, doing these things, especially money. We have a bestiary, bestiary. I always call it a bestiary, along with lots of new monsters. The stat blocks are very simple, as they typically are in Nave. So for example, this guy, he has one hit die that tells you how many hit points he has. It also tells you what his attack bonus is and a lot of his stats, to be honest. Uh, his armor rating, uh, you basically uh, add, um, that's assuming his armor class, more or less. And we have a uh, damage rating. That's all you really need to run most of these types of monsters. A lot of them have special abilities to go along with them. And it's nice that they all have their own little illustration. We have regions and hexes. So how to travel and timekeeping, which is really important when you're doing a hex crawl, which is exactly what this is here. It looks like all of the illustrations of the hex crawl are done using hex kit, which is a really fun program that I like a lot. And then I've used to make some really fun maps. It has a lot of great different tile sets that you can use to change the aesthetics. I'll put a link to that uh, right up here. I've done some videos going over that. And we start going through what's in each of the hexes. Now, the thing that took me a minute or so to, <coughs> excuse me, to understand is that I was reading these instructions here or these descriptions and I couldn't figure out what hex they were referring to. And then I realized that all of the hexes are labeled with letters from A to K. And the first letter of each description is what it's referring to. So Azimex camp is A. The bomb garden is B. The queen's pavilion is Q. That's fun and it's clever. I really wish it was spelled out though, or if it was, I missed it um, because it took me a little while to figure out that that's what was happening. Every hex has some unique thing to discover. A lot of them have different features as to what happens when they're burned because there are fire mechanics in here, which are really interesting because fires are spreading through these marshes as they're kind of drying out. And you need rules for um, how big the fire is, how much damage it does, um, how do you put it out, how long does it take to put out, and so on. And there's rules for that in the book itself. And so if a section gets totally burned over, then it's going to affect what that hex is like. Um, each of these different regions has their own encounter table to give it its own flavor. We have this section, the brambles, again with its own encounter table. And we have the meadows. So this would be the seven hex section in the middle that's slowly rotating. And each of these has a little picture above it so that tells you which hex it's talking about. You can just look at it visually. But each of these is fleshed out much more uh, clearly later on. So, each of, so here's the central spire, for example. Central spire being the one in the middle, it has kind of a, a brief rundown right here of basically what's going on. But then you have like two pages here going into much more detail. And here we have a map of this spire. And I believe this is not flat. This is like vertical direction. Again, I wish that was spelled out. It's, it's clear enough if you read it for a little bit, but it's not immediately obvious. Um, also, these uh, dungeon maps is what it is essentially, is done in a hex grid. And I'm not totally sure how to run that, frankly, because I'm not totally sure what this represents, especially given that it's vertical. Right? Am I able to just go straight up the middle here? Or is this just empty air that can't be climbed? Right? Do I have to stick to the inside over here to climb it? Is this climbing or is this just kind of abstract? Uh, it's just not very clear as to what's going on. I wish that was more spelled out. 
We have a sunken keep here that you can explore along with some encounters. We have a mud pit. And one thing that uh, was a little confusing to me was that we have a mud pit encounter and we have a cavern, sorry, we have a cavern location over here. And I read this mud pit and I was like, it'd be really nice if there was a picture for this. And then I turned this page and I'm like, oh, well, here's some pictures, but I assume this is for the cavern. But apparently that's not actually the case. Apparently the illustration for the cavern is here, but the illustration for the, for the mud pit is over here. And this took me about five minutes to figure out. It could be that I'm just kind of dumb, but it would be really nice if this was labeled so that it was much clearer as to what is corresponding to what. We have some uh, different effects that the cavern can have when it's wet or when it's dry. The water level is going to be different. That's going to change the tactics. We have a uh, lava maze. So you, you start out um, at the entrance, which I guess would be E. And then you can explore trying to find these vault cells, these uh, items that are part of the mission to recover. And we have a vault near the end where we have a map here laying it out. So overall, I think it is a very runnable uh, module. There's a lot of content in it. You get tons of new monsters. You get a very detailed hex map to explore with a lot of variety, lots of random encounters, lots of weird NPCs to deal with. You have cool twists, like part of the map is rotating. The main flaw is I think there could have been a little bit more editing and things labeled a little bit better. Um, but overall, I think those are quibbles because the content itself is very interesting and very good. Um, some adaption might be needed, especially for things like that uh, tower going up. I would have to make up my own rules for exactly how that worked and, and where the encounters were. Um, but I don't think it would be too much of a problem. Anyway, if this looks interesting to you, I'll put links down in the description below for where you can check it out for yourself. You can also check out uh, my newsletter, The Gladizant, if you'd like to subscribe to it. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you guys next time.